Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, long time no see, and that's because I'm finished with my first year of physics PhD school. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so, and as you guys can see that from this video, that this is a recap of my first year of PhD. I'm just going to talk about my second semester of PhD and my qualifying exams. But if you want to know more about my first semester, then feel free to check out my previous video that I did on my recap of my first semester, link down below. So, um, I'm back and the reason I was not back before was because my course load and my workload for my research lab and just managing a personal life while Filming and editing was just not gonna happen. The workload was just too much and I just needed to prioritize something more than something else and that's how it happens some days and that's okay. Also, if you guys wanna check out my Instagram, my Instagram is AYL underscore studies physics and it's gonna be here and I post a lot of tips and interact with you guys more over there and I regularly post on my stories so if you guys wanna see more over there, definitely head out to my Instagram. Let's get to this video. Uh, semester was definitely harder than um, last semester in terms of course load where I felt like um, the level of physics was definitely higher. And it's not just because I think that these classes that I took are harder in general, but I just don't know why. I just felt like obviously what I was studying felt like it needed more time and more effort and I needed more time to do my problems and do homework. So I definitely think um, that the course load this semester was way harder than previous semester. So I definitely put more time in this semester compared to last semester. So the next thing that I want to talk about are all the classes that I took. So these are the classes that I took um, this semester. So I took quantum mechanics two, and as you guys saw from my previous video, I took quantum mechanics one in my first semester. So this was the second of the two semester course. Then I took statistical mechanics and thermodynamics, and I took electromagnetism and two research rotations. My school does research rotations where I need to um, go to a professor's group or lab and be with them and learn more about the research so that it makes it easier for us to choose an advisor at the end of the semester. So this is what I thought about quantum mechanics 2. I thought quantum mechanics 2 was very much more involved than quantum mechanics 1 where, you know, the homeworks in quantum mechanics 1 kind of felt like more simple than quantum mechanics 2. But yeah, it was definitely much more involved, way more topics that we covered. So in quantum mechanics too, we essentially covered a lot of uh, materials, but I don't think we covered everything in the syllabus. So we started with variational method, WKB approximation, time-dependent perturbation theory, scattering problems. We continued with the Arvanov bomb effect. Uh, we did a lot of Lie groups, Lie algebra, um, group theory, and added them with the angular momentum. We did um, the quantization of electromagnetic fields, and then we ended up with the Dirac equation and some more topics in quantum field theory. I thought the subject material was very, very interesting. It definitely felt like, wow, I get to learn this, and I'm appreciating this, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna learn about the Dirac equation, like pinch me right now. You know, like it was like those kind of moments where you feel like, okay, yeah, this is why I'm doing a physics PhD. Obviously these topics are quite hard to teach students, but I felt like I just didn't understand to the core, like very thoroughly these kind of materials that I wish I had. Like I wish I'd given it more time and understood it more thoroughly so I can like, you know, appreciate it more. So that's like my only complaint that I feel like I wish I had like, I wish I had like understood it more. I just feel like I just tipped the surface of these things because they're super cool and you know, that's what I'm here for, to gain all this knowledge. So the next one is gonna be statistical mechanics. And my God, I just wanna scream because it's statistical mechanics, but statistical mechanics was the hardest class for me. I just don't know why, because statistical mechanics was the class that I was most excited for. So the fact that I was not doing my best in the class wasn't great. I think the main issue that I had with this class was that I didn't really take a course in statistics or probability when I was an undergrad. In my thermodynamics class in undergrad was also not that great, so I just felt like the subject was always felt like confusing me and um, yeah, so I wish I had a more thorough background in stats and probability and I wish I could just naturally see 
you know, if there are n particles and there are n ways to put them in these three boxes or k boxes and how that's gonna be. And it's just like, it's kind of like problems like random walk and uh, what is the probability of density. Those really confuse me. And also though, in terms of thermodynamics, I feel like there's a sheer amount of formulas that you can manipulate and put them into thermodynamics. Like, a class was just necessarily hard. It was just something felt always missing in my head. I always felt like, you know, I wasn't fully understanding it. And I think that's why it was my weakest subject. So the next class, electromagnetism. And Thankfully, I want to say that this was my strongest class. Um, and I think it's because I had an advantage over everyone else because I had the same undergrad professor as my graduate professor. So I kind of knew how his own work style is, how his exams are, how his lectures are. And he is a great lecturer. So, you know, um, it felt like, you know, I understood everything. I also like um, was doing the homeworks regularly and we, we got like two sets of homeworks every week it was definitely a lot and i think i just enjoyed the topics more and felt like um that i was more enjoying it rather than just seeing it as something as challenging i forgot to mention is that this is also a two semester course but as phd students we are not required to take the second enm course and i'm not gonna take the second enm course um, but we essentially cover electrostatics magnetostatics linear media electromagnetism um, all the Maxwell equations and electromagnetic plane waves. So that's where we stopped. We didn't go over uh, radiation and quantization. I felt like, you know, the my advice would be to definitely study from Jackson and Griffiths as much as you can because those are the textbooks that we use and I'm guessing most people use those textbooks. Um, definitely practice problems, definitely practice um, more than you think you need to practice for them because that's basically what I did and yeah. That was my strongest class and I really enjoyed the class. My two research rotations, I'm not gonna tell the names or anything. It was a very um, tough research rotation for me this, this semester, especially the first one. So my first rotation was with the professor who had a lab, but that's all he had was a lab. There was maybe like one other student who was a theory student and I mean, he has a lab, so you know, you need experimental people to come in and do work. But so the other person that he had was only for like computation. But um, that's just about it. That's it was kind of like a one man show thing. And when I came, it felt like he was filling the void of everyone in his lab. So I was a postdoc, I was the graduate student, I was the undergrad, I was a lab tech, I was a janitor. That's how it kind of felt like. And there was no one else and I guess he does not have funding so um, he made me do all of the work. Which honestly I didn't even mind that much because it's like, but come on, like you know, I'm here as a first timer to learn more about yourself, your research and see whether that's the right fit for me. And the expectation of that professor was that I need to be here in lab seven days a week, every single day, and I need to come early and leave late while he is only gonna be here once a week. And sometimes that's okay, but in this kind of way, it kind of felt like I would be the only person in the lab doing everything. And I just don't want to, that's not my lifestyle as you guys know, I'm trying to have like more of a work-life balance and, and that kind of felt like, you know, you're taking advantage of someone, you're taking advantage of a first year research rotation student who just wants to know just the tip of the iceberg, but you're like literally plunging me down and keeping me submerged, that's how it kind of felt like. And maybe I'll drown or maybe I won't. But that's exactly the experience that I had and not to mention the fact that he, there was always a constant innuendo with him that felt like I was the stupidest person in the lab and probably you know what that's true I was because I was the only person in the lab so I'll take that but that's how it felt like that I was always the stupidest person whatever answers that I gave were never enough for him were always incorrect and always need to be corrected like I did not have a brain and for the most of the time it was so disheartening that I felt like you know what the next time I'm coming, I'm not even gonna try anymore. And not just that, but I felt like I was really made feel guilty by even like not coming some days because I needed to study for my midterms or I needed to prioritize my schoolwork because that's what basically our department tells us is that, you know, in your first year, you need to prioritize your schoolwork. So that's what I'm trying to do. But, and here are other people who don't have that kind of commitments, don't need to come like twice a week, every single time and stay for the entire day and, you know, 
do research work like that's not and on the topic that i'm not even interested in so that's kind of like it was a whole a very bad experience so he made me feel guilty about you know not coming the days like i would email him and there would never be a reply and then um just the tone of i felt very miserable and also like taking lunch breaks taking bathroom breaks i felt really guilty about like i just needed to be like a robot and working every single time yeah so overall it was a horrible experience and i just want to put that on the camera because you know academia is going to be like that and i'm sure i'm going to have more and more experiences like that as i stay but i just wanted to say that because a lot of the times i feel like professors take advantage of grad students and especially the ones who are incoming and beginners because it's easy because we don't really know what to do and there's no precedent for us on um, what can we do so it was very challenging and it all happened in the month of March which is like my birthday month but I felt completely miserable that month and I was super happy once that rotation ended so let's say that so the next rotation that I did was hell of its own because people never showed me anything I needed to wait and wait and wait and but it wasn't as bad and whatever whatever the reports were done and thankfully the rotation aspect the research rotations have ended and and i get to tell my story about my horrific journey about research rotations i'm really happy that i'm not going to join their labs anytime soon so yeah so the final thing that i want to talk about are my qualifying exams so um if you don't know what a qualifying exam is i also explained this in my previous video again link down below um, but basically every school does this differently. So the way that my school does is that it's actually a written comprehensive exam in four subjects. So quantum mechanics, electromagnetism, statistical mechanics, and analytical dynamics. So, you know, it's going to be a two hour exam and we're going to have two exams one day and we'll have a week in between them. So basically two days a week between and each of the days we have two exams. It was very very challenging because let me tell you that we only got a couple of days after our final exam so we were just had final exams, qualifying exams. It, it was a lot, it was definitely, I felt completely burned out through the semester and then final exam was a hell of its own and then qualifying exam so I feel like I didn't really prepare my best because I wish I had more time to just practice problems previous qualifying exams again it was just the fact that I just needed to do so much I was also having a uh, in-person presentation for my research lab and to do that while studying for my qualifying exams while um, writing these research rotation reports it was quite challenging and i felt like i didn't give up my best uh, statistical mechanics and electromagnetism i think they both went whatever so i still don't know whether i'm mostly iffy on those and then the second one quantum mechanics and analytical dynamics which went well i think the process of like preparing for these qualifying exams i don't think i did the best job and in the time frame that i had i think i did how much ever i could and if I don't pass them, I have the chance to retake them in August. So that's why I wanted to um, start studying for them. Maybe I'll know in like two weeks time when which subjects I passed and which I haven't. But then I'm going to start a actual plan to um, study for those subjects that I did not pass and retake them. It was definitely a hard exam. It was definitely a stamina exam. It was definitely like I needed to like, you know, memorize and figure out and know like two different subjects in one day and almost getting like 30 minutes break is it's not a lot it's basically like it starts from 10 and it goes to like 2 30 so it's not a lot um, of time in between and again i just feel like i wish i had more time to prepare and hopefully in the august qualifying exams i will have more time prepared and i'll do better so that's basically the recap of my second semester of PhD school. I hope you guys found it very helpful. And if you guys want to hear and learn more about my first semester, definitely feel free to check out my video. I'm back and I also have more videos coming up. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you guys did, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot to me. Feel free to check out my Instagram if you guys want to see more of my stories regularly and my tips and where I am actually post a lot of my shorts and reels. So yeah, I really I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye friends!